Hello, everybody. I'm going to be interviewing Antonio today for the vaccine hesitancy questions. I'm going to be playing the role of the professional, and Tony is going to be playing the role of the concerned parent. Say hello, Tony. Hi, everyone. I uh, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the best for my kid. Okay, Tony. So, what's your first question? Um. So, first of all, I heard that vaccines contain aborted fetuses, and that concerns me a bit i don't know if i you know really want that type of thing kind of being you know put into my child so that's a really solid concern tony and this is a very hard misconception to kind of explain because it is in part true so in the 1960s um a couple parents decided they didn't um they weren't ready to have a kid so they went through with an abortion an illegal abortion and then they offered up this child offered up a couple of the child cells to science to be able to advance science and it actually was used to create a couple vaccines and over the years these cells have been grown again and again and they've been used to grow viruses in the cells to create vaccines that save children's lives today so the first thing that's important to debunk is that no other aborted fetuses have been used since the 1960s it's the same germline of cells that have been reproducing for well over 50 years and it's also important to note that this is an ethical issue because abortion is a touchy subject but the vatican has announced that they do support the use of vaccines even if these aborted fetus cells are in them because the safety of the population is vastly more important than one slightly ethical issue in the 1960s i'm not saying it's not important but the Vatican has recognized the fact that children's health is vastly important. And since there are no other children and no more aborted fetuses being used in this process, it's been allowed to be used further on. And these aborted fetus cells are important because viruses like to grow in human cells. Well, the viruses that infect us, of course. And so while they can be grown in chicken cells, and chicken eggs and other types of cells, they prefer human cells. So these aborted fetus cells are doing an amazing job to help create vaccines that are saving children's lives today. Okay. Um, so my mom told me that back in the day, one of her friends got a seizure when she got a vaccine. And that's a little bit scary, you know, to have to witness my kid going through a seizure you know, having some kind of side effects or anything like that. So what's the deal with that? Much like the aborted fetuses misconception, this has some truth behind it. Vaccines can cause seizures. It's listed on the CDC website as a risk factor and potential side effect of getting vaccines. But the risk is so rare, and this happens and occurs so rarely in children that it's not really considered a dangerous risk factor that you should really be concerning yourself about. It's important that you're educating yourself on the risk factors and it's important that you understand going in what type of side effects could come with vaccines. But just like getting out of bed every day, everything has a risk. And the CDC acknowledges this as well. But every med medication that you can take from the CDC, including Advil, can cause adverse effects. It it's important that we understand it. It's important that we know it. But if your child does, on the rare chance, get a seizure, the medical staff are there, they're willing to help, and they're going to help your child. Okay, so another thing about these whole vaccines is I've never seen anyone get one of these diseases, and like, I've never really heard about anyone around me or any of my relatives, friends, any of their relatives or friends having to deal with one of these supposedly preventable diseases. So, I mean, are they really that prevalent? I mean, is, is it really just, you know, big pharmaceutical companies trying to squeeze more money out of me? Absolutely not. So the you got to understand that there has to be some cost up front for any medication made because there's been thousands of hours of research and man hour and testing to make sure they're safe. That's gone into each and every single one of these pharmaceuticals. The amount of scientists that have to get paid to put this research in and put their time in to make these vaccines and the amount of materials used, the amount of years it's taken to get these vaccines safe enough and approved by the CDC, all of that costs money. 
So of course there's going to be an upfront cost when you take your child in to get vaccinated. But the important thing is, is that these prices are relatively low. To get an MR, MMR vaccine in the United States is $20. And it's also important to note that it would be more profitable for the big pharma companies to allow your children to get sick and then sell you on the more expensive drugs that you are used to heal your child after they get sick. So big pharma would actually be making more money if they didn't give out vaccines. Okay, so I have another concern. And so we've already talked about how vaccines can, you know, cause side effects and how that's a low risk factor, but there's a lot of vaccines on this schedule. Isn't it possible that I could overwhelm my kid's immune system and cause problems like that by giving them all of these vaccines? So if we look at the CDC schedule from zero to 18, the schedule can be a little intimidating. There's a lot of vaccines for, and multiple doses for each vaccine on a lot of, done in a very short amount of time. You see that there's the first dose, second dose, and third dose, all within four months of each other. And for a parent for the first time looking at this, that can be intimidating. And it's important to note that the CDC has tested and is, has acknowledged all of this schedule for safety. They've made sure that getting these vaccines at these times is safe for your child. That being said, it's also crucial to understand that vaccines aren't introducing a lot of antigens to your body. Your child comes in contact with thousands of antigens a day. Vaccines only give about up to 69 antigens per vaccine. That's a drop in the bucket based off of what your kid's immune system has to combat in a day. So getting your child a vaccine, two or three, up to five, because sometimes your child can get up to five in a visit, even more, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what your kid's dealing with each day. So for your child to be your child's immune system to be overwhelmed, it's not really going to happen because it's not significant when considering what your child deals with every day. Okay. Um, so one last thing. I, I keep hearing about this whole thing with herd immunity, and I, I just I don't really understand what that is. I mean, I'm not, you know, a cattle, and I don't think my kid is. So, like, what what is that, and why is it important? So herd immunity is just kind of the throwaway term that we use. In reality, your child is going to be put out into society. Your child's not the only one out there. There's going to be billions of other people in the world, and you're one of them. And so you're going to have to be a part of this large society. And part of that is while these vaccines are meant to protect you from society, vaccines is also protecting society from you in the best way possible. Because there are individuals out there who do have compromised immune systems, whether it be from cancer or other diseases, their immune systems are not as strong and not, are not as capable of fighting off diseases as your child might be. And other children like might react to chicken allergies and they have chicken allergies and they might react to vaccines created in chicken eggs. And now they're not able to get those vaccines either. So these number of people who aren't protected, they need to be protected by everyone else being resistant to these diseases. So if your child can't get sick, then the child next door who might be going through um, chemotherapy won't need to worry about getting a vaccine because no one's going to spread it to them. So this is one of the couple reasons why vaccines are not just about protecting yourself, but it's also do unto others as you would do unto yourself. You'd want your child to be protected if they couldn't get vaccinated. So vaccinate your kid. Okay, thanks. I, I think that makes me feel a lot better. Awesome, Tony. Thank you for coming to me with your concerns. Alrighty, everybody. So these are um, a couple of the references, well, all of the references I've used to get the information, either the concerns and the questions and the answers. Thank you so much.